the 1986-87 season. Today, Division 4, 15th, Littlewoods Cup, first round, FA Cup, first round. With Halifax RLFC celebrating their first championship since 1965 under the presidency of David Brook, Halifax Town fans were hoping the appointment of their new chairman might have a similar effect at the Shea. On the 12th of June, John Maidley, a partner with club sponsors Maidley DIY Limited, was installed as John Crowther's successor and immediately stated his ambitions. I assure the people of Calderdale I will bring them the success they deserve. We are going to put Halifax Town on the football map. Top scorer Billy Kellogg was not offered a new contract by Mick Jones and he, Barry Gallagher, Steve Ward, Paul Kendall and Cess Pod were released. Jones was also resigned to losing the jewel in his crown, David Longhurst, who was stalling over a new contract. It required Maidley's intervention to persuade the town striker to stay. Next, Maidley announced a new sponsorship deal, this time with paint manufacturers Volspa. Jones also brought two new players to the club, Laggy defender Dave Robinson from Hartlepool and striker Russell Black from Sheffield United. It was Black who scored the game's only goal at the Shea after only 90 seconds against Aldershot as Town ended a 14-year wait for opening day success. In the League Cup, now sponsored by Littlewoods, the Shea men pushed neighbours Huddersfield all the way. Though Halifax lost the first leg at Leeds Road 3-1, they went two goals up at the Shea to take the time to extra time. The Terriers then scored two scored twice to go through to round two. Alas, no. Despite opening day success, the side lost their next seven matches. Four weeks into the season, following a 2-0 home defeat by Stockport, Town found themselves bottom of the table. In some games, they had thrown points away, such as at Preston, where, with 22 minutes to go, they led 2-0, and in others, injuries had played their part. When Jones's squad had been paired, pared to the bone... They had to play teenage goalkeeper Phil Whitehead and student winger Rick Holden at Burnley and his side slumped 3-0. It was a frustrating time, but at least in Holden, Jones had a player who would prove to be the find of the season. Jones recruited Hull midfielder Mick Matthews and keeper Paul Gregory on loan from Scunthorpe. They made their debuts in a 3-6 home defeat by Northampton. Town recovered to beat Swansea in their next game to move off the bottom but looming on the horizon was the biggest financial crisis to hit the club since it was formed. While Town put a decent run of results together in October, by the end of the month the club were on the verge of extinction. A month earlier they had been given six months to pay off £76,000 tax debt, but now, with the total debts exceeding £300,000, Maidley called in the accounting firm Pete, Marwick and Mitchell to examine the books. Maidley claimed there was no money in which to bail the club out and the odds were against Halifax Town surviving. On the 12th of November, accountant Tony Richmond told shareholders that irregularities appeared to have been found in the club's financial operations. Following an appeal on BBC's grandstand, Town had been inundated with offers of help. When Exeter visited the Shea on the 4th of November, however, it was billed as Halifax Town's last ever game. Town won 2-0 and carried on regardless. The only thing that threatened the visit of Bolton in the first round of the FA Cup was an unpaid electricity bill. The Yorkshire Electricity Board had pulled the plug on the floodlights, but reconnected them when Town's commercial department stumped up the money. Halifax failed to make round two, but it took Bolton three pulsating games before they earned the right to play Tranmere in the next round. All the while, though, Town's financial predicament was ever becoming more critical. The key to Town's survival seemingly lay with the lease to the Shea, but with Calderdale Council unwilling to part with it, there seemed to be no way forward. In November, an Edinburgh property company, headed by Michael Knighton, offered to build a £3 million million sports complex in exchange for the ground, whilst in January, construction group Marshalls of Elland put forward a package to save the club. On the 3rd of December, a letter appeared in the Evening Courier from Mick Jones, in which he claimed the council were letting the club die. On the 12th of December, John Maidley called a public meeting at the Civic Theatre to air designs, ideas designed to save the club. Councillors present were given a rough ride, but the main outcome of the evening was the launch of the Save Halifax Association Lifeline, SHAL, fronted by supporters Colin Richardson and Jack Hamer. They put forward a five-year plan to construct a sports centre at the Shea, paid for by the fans who would pay monthly account amounts into the fund but the long and short of it was that the money simply went to meet Halifax Town's running costs. 
Mick Jones contributed to that meeting, but on the 18th of December he quit the club for the apparent security of the assistant manager's post of Peterborough United, where Noel Campwell was in charge. The following day, Billy Eyre was at last handed the job he had always wanted. Despite the crisis, he got off to a great start with the Shemen going unbeaten for six games and moving up to 11th, at which point Eyre actually went on record as saying that he believed the side was god enough to go up. On the 19th of January, the High Court put Halifax Town into the hands of accountant Tony Richmond. The following day, Town lost 4-0 in the Freight, Freight Rover Trophy at home to Middlesbrough, the club for whom Richardson had acted as liquidator the previous season. In early March, Marshalls of Ellen came back with an offer to pay off Town's £400,000 debts and build a new stadium near the Northbridge Leisure Centre. Marshalls had insisted all along, however, that they intended to build a superstar on the Shea for Gateway Food Stores. When the council rejected their plans, Marshalls, who had been injecting cash into Halifax Town in the hope of landing a contract, pulled out any rescue deal. The club stumbled along, on and off the field. Town were one of several clubs in the frame for automatic demotion to the Vauxhall Conference, whilst SHAL helped meet the club's weekly running costs. The money was running out, and with the council insisting that it was not going to help, money was still owed from a loan in March 1984, Halifax Town looked doomed yet again. Fortunately, Calderdale Council were about to do a massive U-turn. At a meeting on the 8th of April, the council came up with a deal, agreed by a large majority, to save Halifax Town. The brainchild of Labour councillor David Helliwell involved donor in the club £210,000, buying back the lease of the share, it was valued at £150,000, taking control of the club until the new season and, except for John Maidley, removing the present board. Creditors largely agreed to wipe out almost £200,000 in debts and Halifax Town suddenly found itself in its soundest footing since formation in 1911. An advisory committee was set up to run the club until the 31st of August and, re and a relieved billionaire felt the club could only go one way, upwards, and how it needed to. At this point, Halifax Town were living completely in the shadow of Halifax RLFC, who at the end of April followed up their 1986 championship win with victory over St Helens in the Challenge Cup final at Wembley. While they were winning trophies, Eyre could only content himself with the fact that his side had comfortably starved off demotion. That sad distinction fell to Lincoln, who hit rock bottom for the first time on the last day, as the Shea men finished a commendable 15th. But Halifax Town did win its first ever championship when their under-19s clinched the Northern Immediate League in the process seeing off Leeds, Newcastle and Sunderland. Players such as Phil Whitehead, Wayne Allison, Lee Richardson, Dee Martin, Bobby Barr and Phil Sharp had all appeared in the first team this season, with Billy Barr, Toby Patterson and Paul and Jimmy Willis waiting in the wings. The future of Halifax Town looked bright. <laughs>